We're in the season when the state conventions of the National Farmers Organization are underway, leading up to the National Convention, which is the highest authority in the NFO. I'm visiting today with Devon Woodland, NFO president. Devon, why is this year's convention coming up in December so significant? Well, Phil, all of our conventions, all of our national conventions are extremely important, and this one particularly, because uh, herein we will be able to show the strength of the organization, the unity, the determination, and we'll have, without a doubt, the largest visitors gallery this year that we have ever had, because on the invitation list we have listed companies that we're doing business with, and we're inviting them to come and meet with our delegates. Also, it's the year when the officers will be elected. It's going to be uh, an educational convention, a working session with just enough relaxation mixed in that uh, I think everybody will enjoy the convention. There's been some very significant things happen that would give us encouragement, and we want to pass that on to the delegates. Well, Devon, I understand the national board members have been systematically contacting young farmers and ranchers. During the last board meeting, the board members reported on their activity between the one previous and this current one. And uh, it even shocked them that they were able to go out and talk to key young farmers, and they themselves enrolled 94 new members into the organization. And what's more important than that enrollment is that the production that these new members have be committed to the organization on contract and be delivered and go through the system. NFO leaders have been talking to young people all across the United States. When the National Board met a month ago, they challenged each other to go back to their states and contact the most promising young farmers and ranchers. First, here's Anita Maxwell of New York to report on visits with young farmers. Well, I didn't think there were that many young farmers under 35 in my county, but I went home and I started looking, and we found quite a few. In fact, I signed up 16 under 35, six just a hair over 35, and a few, you know, old fogies about 40, 45. Now, I shouldn't say that. But we signed up a total of 49 new members in a, uh, about four weeks, going out a few afternoons a week, and we just went door to door from one farmer to another, people that we ordinarily would pass by. And, and the strange thing was, I signed up 86% the first time I sat down and, ex and explained the NFO program to the husband and wife together, and I signed up 75% of all the contacts we made, which I thought was a fantastic result. Seems to me we might get a good idea of how you go about it if we listen to a couple of tapes of these conversations you had with people who had uh, joined, right? Right. Well, the first one was taken right out in front of um, the farmstead of John Lights, who lives outside of Frankfort in Herkimer County, New York. I think all young, uh, young farmers today are looking for something different than the old uh, different uh, cooperatives and organizations we've had in the past. I think uh, NFO has uh, progressed a long ways, and I'm willing to uh, work with you to help you, I was in Farm Bureau, and I still am in Farm Bureau. Now, Phil, the second one was taken right in front of Dwayne Simon's barn where he was repairing his field chopper. Well, I kind of held out for pretty close to four years on joining and sat back and didn't really do anything, and as a result, maybe didn't help improve the situation either. I've seen some of the things NFO has done in the area, and I thought it was about time I joined them, and maybe I could lend a hand. Uh, I got squeezed out of agriculture in Connecticut because of the land values there, and if the same thing is going to happen here, my sons won't have a future at all in, the, in agriculture, and I basically, I, I feel as though that by working through NFO and helping to get a reasonable price, uh, maybe I can stay in agriculture and maybe my sons will be able to turn to it someday. Uh, I look forward to taking an active part in NFO and possibly helping towards that goal of a reasonable price, and including the cost of production and a profit. Anita, is there anything you'd care to say about this experience? These two interviews we just had were men who resisted the National Farmers Organization Collective Bargaining Program for four years. They've been contacted several times, but all of a sudden they've changed, they've joined us, and all these others that I've signed, the attitude has changed tremendously. All of a sudden 
They realize there's no hope for the family farm, for the young farm, for their sons, unless we have collective bargaining. From New York State, let's go all the way to the West Coast for a report. Art Wilson from California. I think the atmosphere for the NFO and for signing new memberships are better now than it has been since 72. We have reactivated uh, many old members with production, and we have signed probably 25 to 30 new members in a four or five county area. Why do you say they're joining, Art? Well, I think they know that they have to do something. The price of fuel and different things have really brought it to their attention, and a lot of them right now are on bank budgeting, where they're really getting a look at what they need. That's from the West Coast, now the Middle West. From Nebraska, Ed Tiverti. We've had membership come in from 25 counties since the last board meeting, and I think probably the biggest reason for it is that the young farmer is realizing he has to do something for himself, set up his own procurement system, not serve one that has been out here to procure this as cheaply as it could. We have to set one up that will get us a cost of production plus a reasonable profit through collective bargaining. Leland Townsend talking about his home state of Michigan. Back in the central part of the state, uh, when I went back from the board meeting, contacting young farmers, it was very easy to enroll them because of their attitude today. Most of these young farmers believe, uh, like other businessmen, that they've got to have a way of passing on their cost of production. And NFO gives them this opportunity. Also, uh, we have a viable edible bean program and the color beans where we have been instrumental in holding the price up. That attracts, doesn't it, when they know you have an ongoing program. Uh, what about that? Do you think that new membership follows an active program, or is it the other way around? You get the new members and then put together a program. We get the new members and then put together a program, but uh, when beans are 50 percent of parity now, they're interested in doing something also. And here's Tom Conrad from Ohio. Especially the younger farmers in our area know that they're going to have to act more like a businessman and go into a collective bargaining program where they can price what they've got to sell based on the cost of production so they can have that reasonable profit so they can pay their bills. Especially, I've been talking to a lot of the younger dairymen. We've been enrolling a lot of these young dairymen, getting a lot of them on the truck. They know that the nickels and dimes uh, here and there are not going to help them. They know they've got to have a fair test. They've got to have a fair program where they can have something to say about the price they're going to get for the milk if they expect to stay in agriculture. And a lot of them are wanting to stay in agriculture, but are having to leave on account of low price. A lot of these young farmers got themselves committed. They know they can't get out now and pay off their bills. They're going to have to stay there, and they're looking for a program so they can go ahead and act like a businessman and uh, have a, a fair future for themselves and their family on the farm. Jack Lax is an NFO board member from Arkansas. His farming operation is near Clarksville. He has some interesting things to report on what NFO has to offer Arkansas agriculture. Our forward contracting of cattle. This was something that was really new to the cattle people in the state of Arkansas, previous to NFO being organized there. Just in the past month, we have moved in the southwestern part of the state over 2,000 head of feeder cattle that were contracted uh, long last uh, late fall and early spring. The cattlemen are well satisfied with the program. They all seem to be well satisfied that this is a tool that we can use to hold a price or set a floor on the cattle prices. And we're very enthused with the forward contracting program. That was Jack Lax, board member from Arkansas. We talked with Devon Woodland about the overall progress in new NFO memberships and renewals. Some statistics that we put together uh, that would reflect this very thing is in the renewal, numbers of renewal, in May we had 1.5 new members for each renewal. In June, we had 1.6 new members for every renewal. And in July, we had 1.9. In August, we had two uh, new members for every renewal and two also in September. So the timing is right, and without a doubt, uh, this winter is going to be a growth uh, period that I think that uh, once we get through this winter with this optimism among the farmers, 
I don't think we'll ever be stopped again. I understand that this convention is going to be one day shorter than they have been in the past. Yes, uh, ex uh, expenses at conventions are uh, quite a burden for anybody. And so we're going to uh, see if we can't make the convention move faster and still uh, have all the meat in it. And so we'll have our committee meetings on Monday, but the first full day of convention will be Tuesday, which will be a business day. And then on Wednesday, we're going to have the commodity meetings. Then on Thursday will be the final business day of convention, which will include the uh, election of officers. And uh, we have something a little new this year. We're going to honor uh, a group of people who have given years and years of service uh, to the organization who are no longer directly involved in its activity. Honoring the, the old timers who spent the, yes, the best years of their lives. Yeah, that's one, a great story in the NFO. Well, Devon, you're rounding out a year as president of the NFO since Orrin Lee Staley stepped down. Uh, here's a question that I think members all over the country would like to ask. How is the volume in the NFO's programs going in the year that you've been president? Well, the volume uh, is uh, increasing, not as rapidly as we like, one of the things that we're concerned about with the statistics that I just gave you of the new member enrollment versus the renewal, the volume is not reflecting that uh, direct increase in new members proportionately. I see. Uh, for some reason, uh, we're not getting that increase that should come about with that uh, number of new members. We've got to find out why. And it appears that maybe we're losing the new member in the shuffle somewhere and we're not getting him directly involved in the commodity programs. But we're running surveys now to find out who they are and the questions are going to be asked, why? And I'm sure after this convention, we can convince the membership that we're here to stay. The theme is uh, building farm power for 25 years. Uh, and we now have that farm power built. We have the system. And I'm convinced that within a short period of time, 30 to 60 days after the convention, we're going to see a dramatic increase in volume. Well, Devon, you know this tape is going to counties and county organization meetings. What would you say to the counties? Well, if they were to ask me individually what's the most important thing right now that they can do for themselves, I think they have to get their priorities in perspective. And without a doubt, the most important thing that they can do and ought to be doing is making their plans and then carry through with those plans to come to the National Convention. And secondly, to talk to that neighbor, member, or potential member and bring him with them. This month's report to the counties pointed to Kansas City because of the convention, there will be no county tape for December, but your subscription will be credited. Remember those Kansas City dates, December 10th through 13th. The theme of this 25th National NFO Convention is building farm power for 25 years. See you in Kansas City. These monthly reports are compiled and edited by Don Mack of the Radio Division. I'm Phil Allen for NFO News. And that for today is something to think about.